Okay, so this is the set of notes on ethics and research. Very, very important that you familiarize yourselves with these. A lot of students last year took them for granted, thought they were kind of common sense, but the fact of the matter is that they will come up again and again on the AP exam, particularly because research is such an important backbone of psychology and what it is that we look at. So, when we talk guidelines for human research, first thing first, you have to have a participant's informed consent. So consent means okay, they're willing to be a part of your study and you're not forcing them to do so. Second is informed, so they need to be fully aware of what it is that they're getting into when they become a part of your piece of research. If, for whatever reason, your study involves the necessity for deceiving a participant, Two key components. One, the deception has to be essential for it to be okay for you to do that. And two, the person that is involved in your research needs to be informed of the deception later on. So let's say you tell a person that they're participating in a study on negative reinforcement and learning styles, but what you're actually doing is studying their willingness to obey an authority figure. At the end of all of that, you need to tell them, this is what I was actually studying and this is why I had to tell you that I was doing one thing when in actuality I was doing another. You also have to protect them from harm or discomfort. If a study gets to a point where there's the possibility of some kind of long-term negative consequence to a participant, whether it's physically, emotionally, mentally, you've got to stop. You are not allowed to continue. We'll be discussing a scenario where there was a study called the Zimbardo Prison Study. It was meant to go for two weeks. They couldn't, they had to stop it after several days because they were so concerned about the long-term impact that was going to be had on the participants that were involved. So ethically, you've got to stop and protect from harm and discomfort. You also have to keep things confidential. You cannot just willy-nilly give a person's information it has to be kept secret. So when you report results from your findings, you know, you cannot provide personal information of your participants. You have to give them pseudonames, for example, um, and make it so that way their information is kept private. You also have to give an adequate debriefing. You need to make sure that the participants are fully aware of all relevant information that is involved in their participation, um, why the research was being done and try to con correct any misinterpretations that came about during the study, particularly if there was deception involved. So, why privacy? Big question that we have to ask ourselves, ethically speaking, is it violating a person's privacy um, when we're studying humans? Is it okay to do that? Is it all right for us to be able to take findings and bring them out and generalize them out to the whole population? Um, in order to be able to essentially help mankind, um, you know, better them in terms of what our research involves. That's a big issue that a lot of psychologists are facing today. Is it okay to breach a person's privacy if it will better humanity in the long run? Big, big issue. A question we often get in psychology is why is it necessary to use animals in research? Two big reasons. Basically, we want to take a look at animal behavior too. Um, we do want to see what's going on with them. Are we the same in terms of how we process information? Um, but we also want to figure out why animals do what they do. And there are some things that we can do where animals are concerned to test them on them that we just can't do with humans. So, research with humans, we're not allowed to carry out certain things. Um, we can't, for example, cause physical discomfort or harm. So how do we go about finding out certain things with regard to pain, for example, um, or other behaviors? Best way to do that is through animal research, okay? Um, we just, unethic ethically speaking, we just can't gather certain pieces of information from humans, so we need to use animals. They're not usually subjected to extreme pain um, or any other level of kind of inhuman conditions. They're uh, they're not allowed to be starved um, or anything along those lines. It has to be necessary for human benefit and welfare in order for an animal to be uh, put under some level of inhuman uh, and inhumane conditions. There are guidelines as to how to care about animals during research that's being done 
just like there is for humans. So they really do try to be very ethical with animal research. It's only when it's done to benefit all of humanity and necessary to understand human welfare that animal research is going to be done, typically. That's the end of our slideshow on ethics.